Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, current exercise prescription guidelines indicate that uh, people should be exercising about 30 to 60 minutes of low to moderate intensity exercise, so talking about jogging or walking, on most if not all days of the week. Uh, unfortunately, about 40 to 60 percent of Australians fail to uh, adhere to these guidelines, with about 10 to 20 percent being sedentary, doing no exercise at all. And most people report lack of time as being the main reason they don't adhere to these guidelines. Some more recent research that's been done by our research group and, and others have shown that vigorous high intensity exercise, so sprint exercise, can result in very similar adaptations to this endurance style exercise, but doing it in a much shorter time frame. So we're talking about exercising, doing about four to six sprints um, of a range of about 10 to two minutes in duration can result in very similar adaptations. So this is a study looking at something called PGC1-alpha. Um, it's a cell signaling protein which results in adaptation from, from exercise. And this is resulting from sprint exercise and um, endurance exercise, and very similar adaptations within these, these proteins. Um, this sprint exercise can also occur uh, at a lower perception of pain and also lower perceived exertion. So this, along with the reduced time to do sprint exercise, should really improve uh, program adherence. The problem with this sort of sprint exercise, though, is if you have a look at the person up in this picture doing this sprint exercise, you can see it recruits a huge amount of muscle mass. Uh, when it does that, it requires a lot of blood to be pumped around the body and can put a lot of strain in the cardiovascular system. So it's not ideal for those that are in most need, um, at-risk populations. Uh, a novel uh, exercise mode that we've looked at is doing something called, we've called uh, specific aerobic overload training. And this is recruiting a much smaller muscle mass. Uh, by doing this specific overload training, we've been able to reduce the cardiac stress but still induce quite high intensity exercise. So the specific model that we've looked at is something, uh, is high intensity single leg cycling. So it's just exactly the same as traditional single leg cycling. Um, same as traditional single leg cycling, but this person is exercising with just one leg. When he's exercising with this one leg, that entire blood flow coming from the heart is now being delivered to one leg, which can really stress that peripheral system. Uh, so we ran a, a study using this single leg study design, uh, where people just exercise for two weeks. And using this uh, study design, we saw that the uh, adaptations to performance were very similar to traditional endurance exercise and also very similar to sprint exercise or traditional bilateral or double leg cycling. Uh, what we did see that was quite interesting though was we saw an increase in cellular glucose transport. So this graph over, over on the, the right here, the one at the top, shows uh, single leg cycling in the, the grey bar and double leg cycling, or traditional double leg <coughs> cycling uh, in the dotted bar. And you can see from this increase in GLUT4, which is a marker which helps to pull glucose inside the cell. And it's very important in controlling diabetes or preventing diabetes. And we saw with this single leg cycling model a much greater increase in that marker. We also saw an increase in something called COX4, which is associated with aerobic metabolism. And this helps to improve cardiovascular health. So with this, or this sprint cycling, we saw much greater improvements in these markers. Uh, so the implications of these findings is that um, although high intensity interval training or high intensity sprint training may result in very good adaptations, it may not be possible for, for certain clinical populations. Uh, what we have found is using this reduced muscle mass training or this specific overload training, we're able to get significant improvements even greater than uh, high intensity sprint training as well as traditional endurance training. And this may help to restructure some of the way we structure exercise programming. Thank you.